Welcome back to the Go Training. This is module three, Global Ebola Response. By the end of this module, you will be able to describe the mandate of UNMIR in Ebola response. And this is a UN mission for Ebola emergency response. And second, you'll be able to state the four main pillars of this global response. So, what, who has what responsibility in responding to the Ebola outbreak? It's very important to remember that national governments have to implement the relevant temporary recommendations issued under the International Health Regulations, IHRO 2005. National governments are the first responders and they have obligations on how they should respond. So this is something very important to remember in the Ebola response. Second, WHO provides technical leadership and operational support to these governments and partners for Ebola control efforts. And last but not least, UNMIR uh, complements the work of governments and partners and serves as an umbrella structure for the entire United Nations actors for streamlining response, making it more effective at ground level, providing leadership and operational support. So you see how the national governments, WHO as the technical and now operational agency, and the UNMIR, which is the umbrella for UN agency actors, come together to try and bring this very serious outbreak under control. So let's look at some very key dates. It's very important to understand how this response has evolved. Right at the beginning of D July, 2nd to 3rd of July in 2014, an emergency ministerial meeting took place in Accra, Ghana. And really, this was the first time that the Ebola outbreak was seen as a regional problem, not just a problem of individual countries. An operational coordination center was set up in Conakry in Guinea. Later that month, 31st of July 2014, there was the launch of the Ebola Outbreak Response Plan. And this outlined the main pillars of activities and initial resource estimates for what would be needed. In early August, on the 8th of August in 2014, the Director General of the World Health Organization declares this a public health emergency of international concern. And this is uh, under this international agreement where only the Director General is able to declare a public health emergency of international concern and this immediately triggers actions by the affected governments and the global community. And at that time, we issued international health regulations temporary recommendations on how to start responding to this very, very serious outbreak. On the 19th of September 2014, UNMIR United Mission for Ebola Response, Emergency Response for Ebola, was established. And this was a global coordination and strategic guidance group. And they started operating out of Accra and they very quickly had presence in each of the three countries. And then, very quickly, an Ebola response roadmap bringing together the resources of many agencies was compiled. And its goal was to stop Ebola transmission globally uh, within six to nine months, while addressing the broader socioeconomic impact of this intense transmission areas and the rapidly changing consequences of international spread. By this time, it had become a concern that Ebola would spread to other countries around the world. And here, I would like you to take time at the end of the module to look at the roadmap, the three main objectives and the key milestones that were set. Now, we've referred to UNMIR. So UNMIR is an acronym you will hear and it was very, very pivotal in the emergency response. It stands for the UN Mission for Ebola Emergency Response, UNMIR. It's the first ever UN mission for a public health emergency ever created in the history of international relations. It was established to address the unprecedented Ebola outbreak and head of mission is a special representative of the uh, Secretary General. Uh, currently it is Ismail Ahmed and there is also a special envoy to the Secretary General of the United Nations, Dr. David Navarro. So we had very high level political, strategic, operational and programmatic cohesion, if you like, for a joint response. 
And uh, this is a visualization of the Ebola, resp- the global Ebola response. It had four pillars. And uh, we will go through each of these four pillars. So case management, case detection and contact tracing, social mobilization and safe and dignified burials. Um, and you can see how money, we estimated how much would be needed in order to do this. And these are phenomenal, phenomenal resources that were required. Um, and for different areas of response activity, there were lead agencies. So, for example, for case management, WHO was the lead. For case finding lab and contact tracing, WHO was the lead. Right. Uh, for safe and dignified burials, it was the International Fred, uh, Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies. Community Engagement and Social Mobilization, UNICEF. Then if you look at Crisis Management, UNMIR. Logistics, UNMIR and the World Food Program. Cash payments, because these communities were paralyzed. Borders have been closed. Economy is in shambles. That was the UNDP. For staffing, for training, for training, WHO and UNMIA together, and information management, UNMIA. So these lead agencies led this, but obviously under each category, there were hundreds and hundreds of other agencies. And except for this collaboration, we could not have made the progress that we've made so far. And then in the in this strategic plan, there were things called key enablers. Logistics, staffing and human resources, training, information management, cash payments and coordination. Just a point here, training, as I said, WHO and UNMIA were in charge. And this particular training was done by WHO under the training leadership. The the pre-deployments have been done by that. And we have been coordinating other uh, pre-service and on-the-job training that is required in the field. So there, as I said, there were hundreds and hundreds of respondents, and it's really unfair to try and put them on a slide, but these are just some of the actors. And uh, this details exactly WHO's coverage of the response. Again, at the end of the module, I'd like you to take time and really understand where WHO uh, led or covered the response and, and then the other areas we contributed to, the, uh, to other people's leadership. There are response updates that are posted regularly on WHO's website, uh, on the World Health Organization website, on uh, Office of Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, UNMIA and Community of Practice. So these are all resources that you can go and you can find out much more information. This is a photograph taken in Nigeria, which was one of the countries where Ebola, where they had an Ebola outbreak and the impact of the outbreak on Nigeria was feared to be extensive. Lagos, where it was first discovered, has a population of 20 million people. And in fact, by doing similar things such as this, case management, contact tracing and and case finding, social mobilization and safe and dignified burials, Nigeria was able to bring their outbreak under control and have zero cases. And this is a very happy uh, image from that country. We hope that with your support in this Ebola response, we will have this kind of image in the other three countries as well. I hope this session has been useful to you. There have been a couple of slides where I really want you to go back and really understand the different roles different agencies play in this response. Um, Enjoy revising this module and I will see you for the next module.